I see my name in shiny lights, yeah. A different city every night. Oh, I, I swear the world better prepare for when I'm a billionaire. It's time to get down to business on the weekend's number one business program. Known as the king of networking, your host, Shalom Klein, has worked with thousands of entrepreneurs and created countless jobs. So, to success, let's get down to business. And indeed, we're all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship and business. We talk a lot about business here. You're on with Get Down to Business. And I'm your host, Shalom Klein. And remember, you can always download podcasts from Get Down to Business on my website at shalomkline.com. And while you're there, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. At Shalom Klein, it's going to be a jam-packed week of content and information you will not want to miss, so let's jump right in. I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined by an entrepreneur and a marketing consultant, um, and that is Brett Kaufman. Brett has made over $3 million as a political fundraiser and has a degree in, st- in study communication and media studies from Towson University, and he's a partner at Wellspring Media Marketing Consultancy that has made over $45 million for its clients and Wellspring has been featured in Forbes, Business Insider, and the New York Times. So, Brett, I know you know a thing or two about marketing and about how to uh, wordsmith and turn uh, posts and emails into profit, and that's what we're going to talk about. Brett, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, absolutely. It's a pleasure. So I love to get to know the person behind the microphone. I know, as mentioned, and I know you and I were talking offline about how you have always been a bit of wordsmith. You've always been careful with how you communicate and you've been able to utilize those skills to generate dollars for good causes in the nonprofit space. And now you're doing a great job um, working with businesses and maybe some nonprofits too. How did you become so passionate about this work? Oof. So you told me keep it succinct. So we're going to definitely keep it succinct. But I just want to quickly say, as you are the king of networking, like the intro said, I love how to all the listeners we just found out we knew like a hundred people in common, <laughs> which is just the smallest, making the world the smallest of the places it could be. So I love that. Um, so my passion in words came backwards in the sense that I grew up being not a good writer, you know, getting C's on my papers, like writing was not a forte of mine. But after, uh, so I lived in Israel for a little bit of time and I came back, that was my sophomore year of college, came back from my junior year of college after living in Tel Aviv, and I had an amazing year in Israel, but I fell into a very deep state of depression to the point that I pretty much lost my ability to speak. So I felt like my jaw was clenched. I literally felt like I couldn't have conversations. So I'd walk around with a notebook and I would write out things that I was trying to say because I literally couldn't get the words out of my mouth. And that led me to being one, obviously trying to overcome that, but also then studying the greatest speakers. So whether they were writers on paper or like speakers like on stage or listening to podcasts, like how do people say certain words to get emotions across? And I, I fell in love with learning how to clearly communicate. And yeah. Um, then with all, obviously my passion, cause I was living in Israel and then I wanted to get involved with activism. Uh, Towson's only an hour from DC. So I spent so much time not in school and working on the Hill and working for like think tanks and eventually led me to working for APAC where my job was to cold call. Uh, and so I'd cold call like a hundred people a day. And uh, um, I realized it was much easier for me to raise money if I wrote really good emails or text scripts. And that thank God allowed me to raise like the $3 million for them in, in, in the three years I was there, which I'm so proud of because I was really good at speaking their language and in words I would get them to go, okay, I'll sit down with this person and hear what they have to say. Well, we're going to talk about Wellspring Media in just a moment, but I want to talk about that key point that you just mentioned that I know all of our listeners are fascinated by. Because when we talk about emails and when we talk about copy, often those are viewed as a tedious, time-consuming chore of, hey, I need to get that copy over to the printer before we produce that trifold, or I need to get that email off in for my constant contact or for my MailChimp before the deadline, and I'm just going to rush through it, cram, make sure it gets out and uh, to hit the deadline, and wow, I'm successful in marketing. Brett, is that not the case? So not anymore. That used to be the old way when you have that mindset around it. Now it's all about everything is written communication. It's how we communicate to everyone. And so when you can shift it and say, oh, this is just like I'm having a conversation like we're having, but on words, you change your entire relationship to it. Indeed, absolutely. So I know that's become your area of expertise. And certainly social media is something that's become even more 
important in the uh, times of COVID when folks are, you know, transitioning, we're spending perhaps more time looking at those computer screens, as mentioned, those email copy, um, yeah. just, you know, wordsmithing in general. But so th that, that sort of segues into what Wellspring does. I know you specialize in a couple of different areas. Do you mind telling us about what you and your team do and, and how everybody's expertise combined creates this sort of dynamic um, partnership with your clients? Yeah, so that's a great question. So we work with some of the largest brands from people like Under Armour, Reebok, Adidas, to large people in the coaching space and, and econ space, eight, nine figure companies. And what we found was when you sit down with someone, they're so good at explaining themselves. Like you feel that passion, but when you read their words on the page, it doesn't transfer over. And but because you can't always have that face time, especially how large companies like these are, it loses its connection. And so our whole job is to transfer that passion from the spoken word to the written word. So every time you read something, you're like, oh, I like this or I don't like it. That's the best thing about marketing, the clear communication. And so we always, what we really help people to, whether it's a smaller company or all the way to the larger brands I mentioned, is how to take the words you passionately are speaking like you and I are now and making sure when the person reads it, they know exactly who you are, exactly what you, what you do, and they get to decide if this is for them or not for them. So I know you have gone from sort of hating writing, maybe not being so great at writing, to now you are uh, fond of the terms captivating copywriting, and you Correct. and your colleagues at Wellspring Media are dedicating an enormous amount of time to helping businesses and organizations to become better at the process. But I want to go back to that example that you just used about cold calls. I think you mentioned it in regards to your time fundraising at APAC that you are making all those cold calls. I have to ask as a uh, sort of fascinated, uh, interested party in the industry in general, uh, how has cold calling changed since the onset of COVID? Ooh, that's also a really great question. So cold calling has changed because one, I mean, I don't know about you. I don't check my voicemail anymore. In fact, my, my Nana yells at me all the time because she can never leave a voicemail because I just, I just never delete it. So it's just become more obsolete, but people are always on their phone. And so the first realization I had was like, all right, well, if I miss them, meaning they don't pick up the phone, what are the odds they're going to check their voicemail? What if I text them? And so how voice, so how cold calling has changed, it should be called cold texting or just cold outreach in general, because it gives you a lot more paths to go down. And so when I started to call, so then saw my number, but they didn't pick up and then sent a text, which popped up on their phone screen, that got a ton more engagement back. Cause I had like an email subject line, one or two sentences to say, Hey, this is who I am. I want to talk to you about this. Then they would call me back or they would at least respond back to me in text. That got so much more than ever leaving a voicemail ever could. Absolutely. So our listeners know that this show is all about sort of that homework assignment, that thing that we want people to put into practice, put into action in the week ahead so they can have a better week, a more successful week in business. So you just mentioned something I'm very, very passionate about, which is subject lines, subject lines instead of just the, um, the subject line of following up. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I know you spent a lot of time on the Hill. I, I get so many emails from every member of Congress fundraising just one more time or something like that. Right. But either way, what is it that that small business owners, too, should be putting into practice to, uh, frankly, up their open rate? Ooh, so actually, I have a five step uh, five step system that I walk everyone through that will that will allow them to Please. truly know. Cool. So first one. Um, record every single sales call that you've ever been on. And if not, find, find any past client and then record them. Why? Because step number two, go to otter.ai or any transcribing app you like. We like Otter. On Otter, if you're not familiar with it, you get to see the exact words that your people use in this conversation like we would transcribe this call right now. Step number three, take three highlighters. One, Take uh, a red one, which you can hear about, like their mark any time you hear their fears or frustration or anger. Two, get blue. Blue is more talking about hopes and dreams. And then green, anything money related. And then organize it. So now you marked up these page. Step four, organize it in a Google Doc. Literally copy and paste the exact words that they use. Step five, then you start testing it in your emails or your text scripts. So to wrap it together with subject lines, when I start to identify a common theme, pain, hope, dream, I will then put that in the subject line because if my, 
we sell it to people that are just like us. So I can just throw that in the subject line and see if that's getting higher open rates because I at least know the exact words that they're using on a sales call with me. And that's been That huge. is some great advice right there. That's some great advice from Brett Kaufman, partner at Wellspring Media. Brett, we're running near to the end of our time together. I want to make sure our listeners know where they can learn more than just those five steps because I know you share a lot through great communication and I know you're very responsive. How can our listeners get in touch with you and your team? Yeah, so either at our website, wellspringmedia.com, on Instagram, Brett, B-R-E-T-T dot Kaufman, K-A-U-F-M-A-N, the number's 26, or Facebook, which is just Brett Kaufman. And those are the three places. And if you ever want any of your copy looked at, we're happy to do a free audit because we love helping out anyone. So shoot me a message. You talk to me, you don't talk to a team member, you get all of us because we really love helping out. Brett Kaufman from Wellspring Media. I encourage all of our listeners to get in touch. Great advice there. I look forward to uh, following up with you and sharing more in the coming weeks and months. But we've got to squeeze in a quick break. More on Get Done to Business when we return in just a moment. 